Hello, and welcome to Perspectives, a series dedicated to one-sided sagas. These stories might come from us or our most valued guests. Please enjoy. I've attended Camp War Eagle for seven years. This previous year was unfortunately my last. There are so many exciting stories of camp I could tell, but I've decided on telling the story of my first day of camp. Today was the day. I had been packing with nervous anticipation. I was only 10 years old, and this was the first time that I would be away from my parents for this long. As I packed, so many thoughts ran through my head. What would camp be like? Would I make friends? Will the counselors be nice? Would it be like camp is in the movies? Will I meet my long-lost twin and become rivals with her, but eventually become friends and swap lives? As my mind wandered, I heard my mom call, time to go. When I got out of the car, there was a long line of kids in front of the bus. As we stood in line to get my head checked for lice, I felt my stomach turn with nervousness. After my head was deemed free of lice, I said bye to my parents and got on the bus. I was unfortunately in the back of the bus. After three stops and several miles of curvy roads, when we finally got to the camp entrance, I was feeling really sick. As we passed the sign, I noticed about 30 young, sweaty people wearing Camp War Eagle shirts standing around the bus. As we started to drive past, the bus slowed down, and they all started jumping up and down, hitting the sides of the bus and shouting, Welcome to Camp War Eagle! Woo! So glad you're here! C-A-M-P! Camp is where I want to be! Go camp! Woo! Woo! Go camp! As we passed them, I thought, well, that was awkward. When we finally got to our stop inside camp, I felt like I was going to throw up all over everything, and I couldn't wait to get out of the bus. When I looked out the window, I was immediately struck with panic. There was at least 800 people outside my window. Most were kids, but a few looked like the sweaty people we had just passed. As we all filed out of the bus, they began to cheer. As I got out of the bus, I realized they were making a tunnel with their arms. I tried to go around, but someone pulled me through the long tunnel of shouting people. It felt very weird and a little cultish. At the end of the tunnel, I found a group of girls my age. They all had a sticker that said Cabin 13. It was just like mine. Back at Cabin 13, I got to meet all of the girls. We played some get to know you games, like Two Truths and a Lie. The counselors were really enthusiastic, but all the girls were still warming up to this whole camp thing. At dinner, we stood in line to wait. As we approached the door to the chow hall, there were counselors at the door with bins of sweatbands, one with red and one with blue. They called out names of my cabin mates, saying, Alyssa, third year Caddo tribe, throwing a red sweatband at her, or Hannah, second year Osage tribe, throwing a blue band at her. I didn't really know what this meant, but soon they called out, Olivia, first year Caddo tribe, and they threw a red band at me. All of my cabin mates with red bands cheered. At dinner, I asked what this meant, and they explained that camp was divided into two Indian tribes, and every day we played different sports to determine a session winner, and ultimately a winner of the year. They said that it would be explained better that night. Dinner at camp involved very little eating, and lots of strange cheers that everyone seemed to know. After dinner, we had camp worship time. We watched skits, sang songs, and jumped on the giant floor trampoline. After that, everything got quiet and serious. A few older campers were called one at a time to line up outside. They got a headband and a feather, and we clapped once after each name was called. I looked out to see two shirtless men painted with war paint, wearing headdresses and holding drums. We all lined up behind them. People on the blue Osage clasped hands above their head to make an O, and people on the red Caddo held up one hand to make a C. Everyone was silent as we marched through camp, holding our tribe's letter. The only noise we heard was the beating of the drums. As we walked, the two tribes separated. We started to come across counselors decked out in Indian garb. They had on war paint and either were sitting or standing frozen with their letter up in front of a can of fire. We passed about five of these groups before we reached a pond. I noticed that the Osage tribe was gathering on the opposite side of the pond. There were two men in canoes, one painted with red, the other with blue, holding torches as they paddled around a pile of sticks floating in the middle of the pond. 
People came around to quickly paint our faces with war paint as a man shouted a story of an Indian war that started because two people from different tribes fell in love. As he told the story, he, the canoes came closer to the pile of sticks and then lit them on fire. The whole experience was strange. I didn't really know what to think. It felt very ritualistic, cultish, and ominous, and I was a little bit concerned for my safety in the week to come. They talked about flames of competition, maximum effort, enthusiasm, and true sportsmanship. We then discovered the people in canoes were our chiefs for that session, and that they would be cheering us on in our competitions that week. As we walked back to camp, I wondered if this was going to be how the rest of the week would go. And though we continued with the tribes, it got less weird and more fun. Because we had all been initiated, we understood the reason for the tribes, and it made us have more fun and be more enthusiastic. I have loved going every year since then. I suggest everyone try it and not get too weirded out by the camp traditions, because they really are fun. That concludes this episode of Perspectives. Don't forget to follow, like, comment, subscribe, you know, the works. And if you want Squabble to continue forever, check us out on Patreon, link in the description. Thanks for tuning in, and we will snap you later.